go with Greek. Okay. All right. So let's just do a couple more examples. Okay. So our second example, solid calcium carbonate. Actually, is, no, I lied. I think it might be Latin. You think so? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Solid calcium carbonate is heated and turns into a solid calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. All right. Solid calcium carbonate. All right. Calcium carbonate. Calcium is Ca. Carbonate is CO3. All right. Before we do that, I think we need to like figure out what the formula of this because this yep. is an ionic compound. It is. And we have to sort of play the, the Roman numeral game. charge game. No Roman calcium is Ca. Now there is no Roman numeral. Why not? Because calcium is not a transition metal. So I have to play the. I just look at the periodic table. Yep. And so if I look at the periodic table. Here is calcium right here, and calcium is in the, is plus two. Okay, so if it's plus two, because he's in the column plus two, that's uh -huh. how we figure that out. So I'm going to write plus two right here. And then carbonate. Now, how would you find the, what is carbonate? That's a poly, polyatomic ion. So where would I find that? On your polyatomic yeah. ion list. Yeah, so that's CO3. We have it memorized, um, negative two. Mm -hmm. Now, do they charge that up to zero, Mr. Sanders? They certainly do. Well, this is an easy one, man. Yeah. CaCO3. Solid, because it said so. Solid. And it's heated and turns into, it turns into. I'm turns into an arrow. arrow. And actually, we should add something. When you heat something, there's a little th things that you put down below here. This is the little triangle. It, it means goes above the arrow, doesn't it? I don't think it matters. Oh, okay. Heated. Somewhere near the arrow? Yeah. Right. Can go above or below. I don't think it matters. All right. You can, if you want to put it above, knock yourself out. Yeah, I think maybe you're right. Probably more convention, but I don't think it matters. Yeah. All right, that means it's heated. And it turns into solid calcium oxide. Oh, I, I, okay. I got to play that game again. We got to do the charge game again. So the charge we of calcium, calcium is plus there. two, and then oxide. Yeah. Huh? That'd be O2, right? Yeah, no. Why not? Because oxygen. But it's oxygen. No. We just learned it was two. Oxide is uh, in a compound. It's an ion in a compound. All right, folks, that's very important to understand is this just going to be O with a charge. Do not. Its charge is negative two, because if you look on the periodic table, I'm not going to flip there, but it's in the column that's negative two. So this is easy. I'm put calcium with oxide. CaO. <laughs> charge is canceled. This one's an easy schmeezy, Mr. Sam. It is. And it's a solid. It says it's a solid, right? It says it says solid calcium think, oxide. Yep. And I would know that. Well, we'll talk about that later. And uh, carbon dioxide, CO2. And that's a gas. Yes. And we're done. Yeah. Now, by the way, there is something about balancing reactions, which we're not balancing these reactions, folks. That's going to come in our second podcast. And so even though this one actually is balanced, we may have ones that are unbalanced. And you might say, where'd the extra O's go? Um, we'll show you in the next podcast. Okay? I think we've got one more example. I think you're right. Example number three, aqueous silver aqueous. nitrate. Aqueous. Ooh, there's that aqueous thing we talked about. Yeah. Silver nitrate. Okay. So, silver. Yep. AG. That has a plus one charge. Now, that's a, a weird one. It is a transition metal, but it's one yeah. of the exceptions to the transition metal, sort of the exceptions to the exceptions, so it's always positive one. Yeah. And then nitrate. And, but it probably poly. wouldn't be wrong if they put silver Roman numeral one. No, that'd be fine. Yeah, that'd be okay. Yeah, okay, and nitrate has a charge of minus, minus one. one. I, I got that easy. from your periodic table. Plus one, minus one, that adds up to zero. Yeah, so that'd be AgNO3. Aqueous. And, and I'll put a little AQ. Reacts with... Aqueous sodium chromate. Okay. All right. This sodium is in A, and his charge is positive Plus one. one. Yep. And then chromate is from the back of your periodic table, CrO4 negative two, so or your whatever your polyion list mm -hmm. is. Those charges don't have zero, Mr. Sims. No, they don't. So that's going to be. We need two sodiums. Yeah. So guys, it, we've done this before, but it's mm -hmm. just good review. Na2 CrO4. Aqueous. Yeah, and that's going to be an Aq here. And it makes solid silver. Chromate. All right, so I'm gonna put the silver with the chromate. Those don't add up to zero either. No, seems, but I need AG two. Two CrO4. The reason, of course, is you need to have two and that's a positive. Solid. And that's a solid. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna make aqueous sodium nitrate. Yep. That's these two guys put together. Mm -hmm. So that'll be in. They they do add up to zero. Yes, they do. Now, folks, one thing I want to say here is I like to have. I, I sometimes call this section right here my scratch pad where I write out the, the ions with their charges, and then I then figure out what their formulas are. Yeah. So this is the answer. We have now converted this to a chemical equation in the formulaic sense from words. There it is. Okay, pretty easy. Yep. All right. So now I let's talk a few minutes there. about the states of yeah. matter. Okay. Um, this pr last set of problems, it talked about the states of matter, right. and I told you what they are, but there's actually a way to predict what the states of matter. It depends on the type of substance they are. So let's take a look at one substance. First of all, all the examples we want to talk about, we will assume that they are at room temperature. Anything can be turned into a liquid or a gas. If you get it hot enough. If you get it hot enough. Yeah. All right, so let's assume at room temperature what states of matter are these. Okay. First of all, let's talk about ionic compounds. 
You know, I think we ought to just watch a quick video. Let's do that. I think that's probably easier. So let's watch a quick video on it. So how do you know what the state of matter is of an ionic compound? Now remember, an ionic compound is a bond between a metal and a non-metal. Well, I happen to have some here. If you look down here, sodium hydrogen carbonate, NaHCO3, metal to non-metals. Uh, looks like it's a solid. If we move over here to ammonium chloride, ammonium chloride, it's sort of a, well, it's not really, it's a cation to an anion. It's still ionic. Uh, guess what? Uh, that'd be a solid. If we run over here to copper chloride, oh, nice pretty blue stuff, right? Uh, metal to non-metal. Oh, that would be a, a solid. solid. Yeah. And we go to calcium chloride, that's a metal to non-metal. Looks like it's a solid. Looks like it's a solid. Guess what, guys? And we go to sodium chloride, a solid. We go to aluminum sulfate, a solid. Guess what? Most ionic compounds at room temperature, are solids. Not, in fact, not all, not most, all of them are. Ionic compounds. So, Mr. Sams, what, what state of matter are ionic compounds? Solid. Okay. Ionic yeah. equals solid. All right, I'm good. Okay. All right, let's take another one. Let's talk right. about... Um, at room temperature. At room temperature, a covalent, covalent compound. Okay. Hey, perhaps we should watch another video. Video time! How do you know if a molecular compound a covalently bonded compound, what state of matter is it? Okay, well I happen to have a container filled with water. Notice water is a liquid at a room temperature. Now not all covalent compounds are liquids, but I have another example over here. If we jump over here, I have hydrogen peroxide, also a clear liquid. Now they're not all liquids, some of them are solids. Actually, here's kind of the general rule of thumb. The higher the molar mass, remember we learned about that in the last unit, the higher the molar mass, the uh, more likely it is to be a solid. The lower the molar mass, the more likely it would be to be a gas, and in between would be a liquid. So, for example, I'm exhaling. <sighs> carbon, <laughs> oh, that blew Mr. Sam's way. Okay, uh, <laughs> I brushed my teeth. Uh, carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide, CO2, carbon and oxygen, both nonmetals, and that's a gas. But CO2 only has a molar mass of. 44, so relatively low. If I take something like sulfur, which is actually S8, its molar mass is 32 times 8, and sulfur is actually a solid. So it depends. So the, it sort of depends with your molecular compounds. There's no hard and fast rule like with ionic compounds. All right. So what state of matter are covalent compounds? It depends. Yeah, this is the depends one. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, hard to say. Um, if it's yeah. All right, let's do one more. Okay. What about uh? Just elements by themselves. Elements. You know what I think we should do? What do you think? Watch another video! Video! All right. Hey, uh, now what I want to talk about is how do you know what is the state of matter of elements? So, for example, I happen to have a bunch of pennies in my hands. Well, they're solids. Well, pennies are made of copper. Well, copper is an element on the periodic table. So if you go over here to copper, you'll notice, well, on our, copper, our periodic tables in our room, um, the copper is actually colored black. So guess what? Black stands for solid. Okay? But not all elements are solids. Some are liquids and some are gases. Turns out there's actually only two elements that are liquids at room temperature. At room temperature. Actually, we're only talking about assuming at room temperatures. And the two are mercury, and notice it's colored blue on this pretty table, and then bromine, and it's colored blue as well. And of course, gases, guess what? They're colored red. So if you look over at the periodic table, most of the, uh, you've got helium, neon, all the noble gases are gases, of course. And then nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, etc., are also red. There's one other one you should also talk about. Of course, hydrogen is a gas. Okay? A video. So, um, elements, what do you do? Uh, you look at the periodic table? Yeah, just look at the periodic table. Bromine yeah. and mercury are your liquids. And mm -hmm. then there's a few gases, and most things are solids. Yeah. Well, guys, um, I think that's like it. We've, we're finished with 4.1. Yeah. You understand the reactions. We warmed our hands on the very, very cool mm. ethanol. It's very, very warm. And now I'm hot. Okay. Well, we will see you in class or on the internet.